All right, welcome to GC365. We are on day 51 of the one-year Bible reading plan. It's February 20th, which means we are at about the two-month mark for reading the Bible together as a church. So we just want to say congratulations to those of you who are up to date, who have been doing your reading. And if you haven't been reading with us and you want to, it's still not too late to sign up. We always say it's always a good idea to read the Bible. So you can go to goldcreek.org. You can sign up there. You can also go to the Gold Creek app and join us and invite a friend or a family member. It's a lot more fun when you have somebody to read along with you. So um, to intro ourselves, my name is Mandy Jones and I'm the marketing director here at Gold Creek. And this is my husband, Ryan. Why don't you tell us about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm a middle school PE teacher, uh, athletic director, uh, coach, dad of two crazy but cute kids. Uh, this is like the first time I think we've been able to actually sit down and have a conversation without them <laughs> crawling on us and An adult asking conversation. us weird questions and things yeah, like as, that. So this is as we rehearsed this, this a little bit fun. last night, or you know, kids playing with the Bible, messing with things, and our daughter is like, "What color is Jesus?" And we're like, mm, uh, "Yeah, okay." okay. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, it's it's Just, fun. It's nice yeah. to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's be fun. So we're gonna dive into today's reading and. After kind of going through it, we sort of came up with sort of a theme for the overall reading, and it's um, underestimating God's power. So you'll kind of see that theme throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. And we're in the book of Leviticus for the Old Testament. We're in day five of Leviticus. And if you're not having fun yet, you've got about 11 days <laughs> left of it. Um, Leviticus is a little overwhelming. It's a little daunting. It's so a lot so it. much information details. and so many details and it's so specific and all the different sacrifices and offerings and everything that you have to do. So I understand that it's a lot, but stick with it. <laughs> you know, it, it <laughs> yeah. does mean something. The more yeah. that you go through it and and talk with people about it, the more you'll understand it. So just just stick through it. But um, in the book of Leviticus, we're gonna I'm gonna go with what Pastor Danley says. Let's set the scene here a little bit. So we're in chapters nine and ten, and we're with Moses and his brother Aaron. And Aaron has been instructed to pre to prepare his sacrifice, um, his sin and burnt offering for himself and for his people. And as you read through these verses, you're just it's going through all these specific things that he has to do basically to prepare um, these sacrifices. And you often will um, read the words of making them right with the Lord and doing it just as he commanded. And it's just so, so specific. And what I don't love about this is <laughs> there's so much slaughtering of animals in here. It grosses me out. Yeah. What do you think about, it, the, about that? Yeah. I mean, I, I hunt and I still, still to this day need help gutting the deer out, butchering the meat, you know, fishing, cleaning the fish and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I couldn't imagine remembering all the details and things that they have to put into these sacrifices for sure. Yeah. Um, I would not survive the Old Testament yeah. is what I've decided. <laughs> yeah. this, the smell and thought of yeah, raw meat all the time. No, no, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely wouldn't survive. Um, but at the end of chapter nine, um, it says on verse 22 through 24, it says, Aaron raised his hands toward the people and blessed them. Then after presenting the sin offering, the burnt offering and the peace offering, he stepped down from the altar. Then Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle. And when they came back out, they blessed the people again. And the glory of the Lord appeared to the whole community. Fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When the people saw this, they shouted with joy and fell face down on the ground. And that last line, they shouted with joy and fell face down on the ground. I think they were all just like, whoop, whoop, whoop. whoop. We say that a lot in our house. They're like, pre-K, whoop, whoop. Like, yeah, grandma's here. Grandma's whoop, here, whoop, whoop. So like, they were so excited that they got another day. They yeah. they had another day. They prepared their offering, how it was, how it was meant to be. And just having to do that all the time is just, it's an overwhelming, it's an overwhelming feeling. Yeah. Um, but as this kind of goes on into chapter, chapter 10, um, we, we meet Aaron's sons. There's Nadab and Abihu, um, who they decided that they were going to put coals of fire in their incense burners and sprinkled incense over them, which apparently you're not supposed to do. Did you know that? No, not one bit. <laughs> there's, there's a wrong way to prepare your fire, apparently. <laughs> yeah. And they did. They prepared the wrong fire, the fi not the fire that the Lord commanded them to prepare. So the Lord, he, he burned them and they died right there. Which is crazy because they were next in line, you know. Yeah, they I mean they were Aaron's sons. They were they were priests. They yeah. you know, I was reading like a different article about them and it talks about how 
they were of rich family pedigree and they, like, these were the guys that were su- I mean what they were supposed to do they were they were trained with excellence and so for the Lord to make an example of them by burning them to, to death but what was interesting is that they knew what they were doing was wrong they knew that they did not prepare the fire the way that the Lord commanded them to do and so uh, it just kind of goes to show that he didn't care who you were. He didn't care that you were Aaron's sons. He didn't care that you were the priest. He was using them as an example that no matter how small your sin is, that you know you need to do what yeah. what the Lord has commanded. And so that kind of goes back to, I mean, they underestimated his power. They underestimated what what he wanted them to do. Yeah. Um, and you had kind of talked about you know putting God as a priority in your life, which kind of comes back to this whole idea. Yeah, I mean, um, all the details that go into the sacrifices and the worship, uh, I th- I feel like it's God teaching us to dedicate ourselves, uh, commit ourselves to God, uh, not just sit idly waiting for the forgiveness to happen. Uh, it's kind of like lessons of being proactive uh, with your faith. Mm-hmm. Um, and like most things, it requires work. Yeah. And um, he had a kind of a funny analogy and we don't support gambling necessarily here, but he was talking about the lottery. Like their tagline is you got to play to win. Right. Um, you know, and we talked about that in different, you know, sports and school and your job and your relationships. Like you have to put the work in, you have to, you know, practice those things. They just, they just don't happen. And you can't think to be successful if you don't put, if you don't put in the work. Right. So we're going to move into the new Testament. Um, we learned in the old Testament what God is capable of doing. Uh, And we're going to jump into the book of Mark. And we have a few different stories. We're in chapters four and five. The story we want to talk about first, though, is in Mark chapter four. And it's really it's verses 35 through 41. And I think this is a story that most people would probably recognize or have maybe heard before. And it shows up again in Matthew and Luke. Um, But basically, Jesus had been down by the lake shore and he was, um, you know, healing people and casting out evil spells. And uh, he had just then we had learned in a few books before that he had just really chosen who his 12 disciples were. So he was, it was a new relationship with them. And Jesus decided that he wanted to cross the lake, which was the sea of Galilee. So he asked his disciples to get a boat and we want to cross the water. So apparently the sea of Galilee um, is known for its sudden and fierce storms. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I uh, I've been caught in storms and things like that. I wouldn't call them a fierce storm by any means, but uh, I have been caught in storms and I can I can kind of picture what's going on right now. Yeah. Um, I don't do well in rocky water. <laughs> no. I get no, seasick. Don't. I get carsick. Uh, I, I, I really don't do well. So I would have also failed this mission. I'm failing Old Testament and New Testament today. Um, but they go out in the boat. I pictured a small rowboat, right? I'm it. thinking like <laughs> deadliest catch, like waves crashing all over the place yeah. and... Maybe not, maybe not that big of a boat. Not that big of a boat. Okay. But if your storm, it, it happens and, you know, waves are crashing over. It says the waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. And the verse that really got me was verse 38 when it says, Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? And I just so like I, I picture this boat with just waves and water just crashing over and being thrashed around. Here's Jesus just, you know, laying in the back, sleeping, his feet kicked up and his head <laughs> on a cushion. Just no, no fear right. in the world of what is is, is happening. And it, it's, it's just kind of crazy to me that he could be so he could be so relaxed in that moment. Um, but his disciples, they you know, they were fearful. They, they were questioning him that don't you care that we're going to drown? Like, that's just kind of a powerful question. But then it says that Jesus woke up and he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. And the question that gave kind of gives me a little bit of chills is when he says to his disciples after that, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Like, how does that question hit you? Yeah, I mean, it just like with what's going on right now and their, I guess, their short-term relationship they've had so far that the disciples have seen him uh, perform miracles, um, cast out evil spirits and things like that, but they haven't seen something to this uh, degree of of calming the winds and the waves. So I think this power that has happened is is something that they've been underestimating. Mm-hmm. And 
with that question, the why are you afraid you still have no faith? I think about this in my own life when things start to get tough and things are hard, they aren't going well, and you start to question, you become worrisome, you're fearful of what's right. going to happen. When I should be asking myself, why am I so afraid? Like, why why do I have so little faith when that's that's really what it should be is I, I should be having faith that Jesus knows his plan for me. He knows right. what's going to happen. And if I have faith in him, he will take he will take care of me and provide me with what I need. Right. And then we kind of segue into Mark chapter five. We're not going to go into as much detail on this chapter, but it's just kind of repeats again, sort of what happens here is when they get to Jesus and his disciples get to uh, the other side of the lake, he's meted by a man who's possessed um, by an evil spirit. And he is again, casts out this evil spirit. And the weird part is that there's a herd of 2000 pigs <laughs> nearby and the evil spirit asks to enter the pigs and Jesus lets him lets the spirits do that. And as this is all happening, you know, there's crowds of people who are gathering to watch this and see that this man is no longer possessed and that these pigs, they plunge off the hillside, the hillside and drown and they drown. Right. And it's just this crazy thing that happens. And it says in there that they were terrified. They were afraid again of what Jesus was doing. And so again, they didn't understand what was happening. They didn't really have that faith. And so again, they underestimated right. God's power and it, yeah, it's just, it's interesting to me. And the, the man who was possessed by the spirits, he was told to go back to his family and tell them of what Jesus had done for them and how miraculous right. it had, it had been. And so again, that's how we've spread kind of the, the word in the gospel of Jesus is the, by telling the stories and the witnesses and the testimonies of what has happened. Right. Um, and then we go into Psalms and Proverbs, which kind of wrap up our reading for today. Um, did you want to read? Psalms yeah. for us. Yeah, I don't have it up on my phone. So we picked out Psalms. Um, it's, it's Psalm 37 and it's verse 39 through 40. Yeah. The Lord rescues the godly. He is their fortress in times of trouble. The Lord helps them, rescuing them from the wicked. He saves them and they find shelter in him. And then Proverbs, it's uh, chapter 10 and it's verses six through seven. Yeah. <clears throat> the godly are showered with blessings. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. We have happy memories of the godly, but the name of a wicked person rots away. So again, like these, you know, it just sort of ties up today's reading really well of just underestimating the power of God and that we need to put him at the top of the list and to yeah. make him a priority and to do what he's commanded us to do and through his scripture and to be in his word daily, which I think is what's so wonderful about the one-year Bible plan is it lays it out there for you. Um, it's something you can do every day. And so we just encourage you to keep reading, stick with yeah. it, stay up to date. Uh, don't forget to like this video, follow us, subscribe to us on all of our different platforms and make sure that you share yeah. this with your family and friends so they can know what you've been a part of. So thanks for joining yeah. us today. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.